Right now, 2-0 up on the Sixers in this series. What's been your impression so far up in, in these first two games, man? Um, It's been gritty. You know, it's been gritty. Um, it has been uh, a fight that um, is built for a team that's coached by Coach Tibbs. You know, you you in order to fight like this, you gotta go through that type of process to be able to grit all the way until the end. The way how they grinded it out last game, all the way down to the seconds. You know what I'm saying? And I think this is the type of series that people will remember for a long time. That last game will already go down in history as one of the best Knicks playoff games. Ever. So what we're seeing is we're seeing the display of good fortune of good basketball inside of Madison Square Garden, which is pretty dope. Yeah, it's one of those garden moments, man, where people be like, yo, I remember where I was at when, when that DiVincenzo shot went mm. down. Now, since then, mm. there's been a lot of talk about the, the referee and a lot of controversy there. They claim that, you know, the last two-minute report, <laughs> Nick's, Nick's fouled uh, Tyrese Maxey. <laughs> what, what, what do you make of all, all of the, um, the the reports coming out about the referee and the complaints by the Sixers on, in that regard? So, the, you know, from the referee standpoint, like I said, next play, you know, you can't do nothing about it. It's just chatter right now. It's just conversation based upon frustration, you know, vice versa. If it was us, we'd be one the same thing. It's the playoffs. You want everything. Every possession counts. You know, one of the things that Philly's complaining about is that the Knicks are doing all these analytics on these referees, the tendencies, how they call things. Back when you were playing, was that something that was either tracked or something that you guys talked about from game to game? Like, yo, we got Tony Brothers tonight. Okay, here's what to expect. Was that was that a topic of conversation when y'all got ready for games? No, we didn't have those conversations. But I think personally, guys probably had those conversations with themselves as far as them playing um, when those guys are refing the game. So, you know, you know when you get a guy who – normally doesn't officiate you the right way, kind of like you look at a Chris Paul, Scott Foster type situation. You you know that situation already. So it's not um, something that it, it, it's uncommon you know, for another referee, you know, suspiciously, because that Scott Foster, Chris Paul situation is kind of serious. Yeah, for, for sure. And, and then, you know, also another storyline in, in this series is Jalen Brunson. Two games, hasn't shot the ball efficiently. You know, Philly, mm. I feel like Philly's doing a good job on him. They're putting a lot of wings on him. They're putting a lot of size on him. He can't really use his physicality to his advantage. I think Kelly Oubre's been doing a good job defensively. Tobias Harris has gotten that assignment. Then Nicholas Batum. And then what I'm seeing is that a couple things seems like they're staying down on all of his moves to the paint. They're not going for the fakes. Sometimes mm. when he's turning his back to make his move, his turnaround jump shots, they got a second defender helping to contest that shot. And then also when he gets mm. past that point of attack, you got Joel Embiid right there in the middle. So as mm. a point guard, what do you think the adjustment is that, that he needs to make to be a bit more impactful in, in the early parts of the game to, to get some advantages there? That's a great point. I had pointed that out when I was doing my little live um, up-to-date 24-hour <laughs> Well, not twenty four hours. You getting in the game, you know, man. You getting in the media game, man. I was doing game, the man. stories. I was, I was all the way in. I was all the way into the game. Been in the game for a while, but yep. you know. So, you know, I, what I, what I've seen from what he's doing, um, there's two things. There's the, the good, and then there's the not so good. I wouldn't say bad because he's still attacking. Um, he's not on his angle pick and rolls. He needs to have more space where he could go left, where he could go right. He's kind of like inside of the slot area opposed to being on an angle where he's going downhill um him going to the basket and turning his back that right now is becoming a little problem but when the pick and roll is occurring what he needs to do is 
that pick and roll when it comes, he needs to come off the pick and roll hard and then make a move attacking downhill. He got to make a decision opposed to coming off the the pick and roll and probing. Right, right. You know right. they've been studying they've been studying him and they've been watching film, which they are doing a great job as far as following out their game plan and how they have him in their space and their temperament of how they want him to play on pick and roll. So he's playing at their pace. He has to get back into playing his attack mode downhill, going right at Joel and B. Yeah, he may get some blocks, but he got to go to his chest. He has to go and try to draw fouls. He has to use his floater. He has to use his pull-up shot. And he has to be a little bit more decisive off of the dribble coming off the pick and roll. Mm. But overall, you know, you know, the Sixers are doing a really good job defensively, but he's still – maintaining his aggressiveness that shot that he made when the shot it hit the rim and then mm-hmm. it went up and then it dropped in that is you know a shooter's role you know especially at the end of the game that's a that was a big huge huge shot also for his confidence i saw he took a another shot after the game was yeah, over yeah. to make his last shot before he left the garden you know but that's good psychologically mentally he's in the space and he knows but everybody else knows as well. So how he adjusts and how he comes out in the next game in Philly, I said by the I said by game four, I think he'll be rolling because he should be able to make the adjustments. I'm sure him and his dad, um, they're looking at the film, they're watching it. I'm sure his dad is breaking it down, showing how they're playing him, where he can get his pull up jump shots at but again you pointed out something i was speaking about um when you turn in your back when you slow down you give maxi an opportunity to block your shot from the from behind at least two or three times he had his yeah. shot blocked um but at the same time you know he's getting he's getting to where that pull up shot is available but now he has to come out of his shot a lot quicker so when he comes off the when he comes off the pick and roll, boom, he got to raise right up. So if he does raise right up, if Maxi comes from behind, he won't be able to challenge. True, true indeed, man, and well said. Who who else on this Knicks team is has uh, impressed you so far in these two games? Uh, Hart and Dante. You know, also Robinson. He has some Hart Hart These those floaters he made at the end. Yeah. And that block and that rebound, those were those were game plays. You know, those are those 50-50 balls, you know, Tobias Harris, he didn't box out, you know, and, and, and because of that, we got a, a a kick out. OG made a great solid pass to um, Dante at the top for that ice cold three-point Robert Horry style <laughs> shot. Um, you know, so they're playing well as a team. You know, I love the bench and the game. They're staying in the game. You can see their camaraderie as a team. They just got really positive energy, you know, as far as this Knicks team, you know, and I think Tim does, you know, and and and, and um, Leon and West, they did a great job at selecting the guys, you know, in a chemistry style formula. You know, we got second round players. We got guys that were picked. And uh, yeah, no 19, 20. It's no big, it's no big time. So it's you know that, and and, and that's also good. It's no ego. It's just, yeah. it's just hoopers. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, mm-hmm. they like not superstars, but growing into superstars. Blue call, blue collar, hard workers, guys that scrap like old mm-hmm. school style Knicks players. They like Clyde. He made a comment like those guys. They kind of you know, remind him of that team that they had back in the days, even though they had, I mean, Clyde was a superstar and, you know, but you could, I understand what he was saying and the resemblance of how they play, you know, that cohesiveness yeah. <laughs> as, as Clyde would say, you know, so um, it's good. It's good to see, especially as a, as a Nick fan, you know, like I told somebody, he was like, yo, I ain't know you. I was like, dude, I've been a Nick fan since black and white TV, <laughs> man. Chill out. Don't play with me. You know, I know everything went on, went on, but at the same time, uh, never you know, you're a New York kid. It, it is what it is. It's never yeah, going to stop. It, it, it never leaves you, man. No no question <laughs> no. about it. 
And you, you talked about, you know, the, the great guards. On the other side of the court, Tyrese Maxey is having himself a series, man. I, I, I'm looking at Big time. the matchups, especially with the starters. You know, McBride comes in, and, and I thought McBride has been doing his best job in terms of trying to keep it in yeah. front of him. But a lot of times, you know, they may have OG on him. He's not able to navigate those screens. And when Embiid setting those screens and you mm. free Max, you up, it's daylight for him. And then he's a blur going downhill. Speed. Speed, how, how speed do you, kills. Yeah, speed kills. So how, how, do, you, how kills. do you adjust for that? You know, I, I would like to see I would like to see us make him shoot some pull-up jump shots. I would like to see us converge when he drives. I would like to see us cut uh, baseline off even when he drives on that angle from like the elbow because he's real smooth and fast in that area. And then he can change and jump up in the air and, and maneuver in the air. Um, I would like to see us make him shoot pull-up jump shots opposed to getting all the way to the basket. And then we rotate. And we rotate well. You know, we rotate, we close out. You know, we do all of the little things defensively. You know, I play for Tibbs in Boston for a short stint. So defensively, I already understand the mind frame of where he's coming from and his philosophy and his ideology and how he wants to make sure that um, his team – plays conceptually as far as making sure that they move on defense, that they help each other, that they talk, um, all of these different things. You can see that same type of energy from the 2008 championship team, the Boston Celtics. You can see that um, in this team as far as how they play defense. Not quite there on that level, but those guys are evolving into that space. And, you know, I forgot. I didn't mention McBride. His his game won, like off the bench. You know, I gotta mention that because yeah. his energy it sparked us. He came in and completely became an impact player right away, and you know, changed the game right from that first three pointer he hit right next to the bench. You know, off of that pass from 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 Brunson. You know, he came and knocked that down, and that seems like that got him going right away. So I I forgot about him. Yeah, McBride. Yeah. He, McBride. He's been playing with a killer instinct, man. Ever since they traded yeah, quickly, yeah. and he found that opportunity to get more playing time. He, mm. he hasn't let that go. He's gotten better and better and better. And now on the big stage, it seems like nothing is phasing him, man. So his story mm. ha has definitely uh, been a bright spot for the Knicks. Uh, with Embiid, you surprised he out there? You, you, I mean, when he went down, he threw it off the out the glass, and he went down like that. I thought he was done. Yeah. For it. I I, I I knew he was hurt when he did that. You know, I tore my meniscus and he what he did was he tweaked it. You know, it's like getting it's like getting punched in the stomach and you didn't like and you didn't know that you were about to get punched in the stomach and you lose your win. Mm. That, that that's what kind of happened inside his and it created that that tension and that like pins, sharp pins. And I was like, oh man, he don't look like he's gonna be able to play, but you know that's a it's a whole process and cycle. Once you get your breath, once it once you recover and you walk it off, you know. But at this point, you know he 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 has to he has to leave it on the floor. Mm. And I, I look at I look at him at this point, you know, playing against him in the next game. I feel like he's going he's going to be trying to like run people over. Yeah. <laughs> like play straight bully ball like try to use you know everything that he has and try try to will his team to a victory which as he should. You mm. know, that's what you know great players do. He is a great player. How how do you how do players balance that because he's in Philly, right? I mean, outside of New York, mm -hmm. it gets no more demanding than, than Philly. You Boston, same way. You you've been in them. You've been there. Mm -hmm. How do players balance that pressure to perform to to meet the expectations that the organization and the fans have, and also protect themselves? Like I always think about when I think about guys playing through injuries, especially in the playoffs. I think about Grant Hill in that playoff series mm -hmm. with Detroit, going up against mm -hmm. the Heat and his ankle. They knew his ankle mm. was no good, and it got worse and worse and worse, and he was never the same. Mm. How do players mm. balance that? You know, at this point, there is no balance. Is you all in, you know, or you out? You know, you see the guys who have injuries, and they're sitting on the bench. Mm. You know, you got Giannis, you got Zion. You know, you got different 
stars that are not playing because they're hurt. And, you know, at this point, some guys can take a chance and some guys, they just don't feel 100% confident to get on the court. But, you know, psychologically and mentally, it's a, it's a challenge. But I think in an Embiid situation, um, being that he's been cleared and he's done all of the things to, that he needed to do to, to get on the court and play, you know, he's able to play. You know, he's not 100%. We can see that he's not yeah. 100%. But who's 100% in the playoffs? True. Everyone yeah. has something yeah. going on. You know, after going through a long, grueling 82-game yeah. season, you know, and now this is the this is the time. But this is the time. This is the best time to play basketball. There's no better yeah. time to play basketball. So, you know, it's a it's a big challenge. You know, as you mentioned, Grant Hill, his, his, his ankle never got better during those times. But, you know, I'm sure Grant would do it all over again. Mm. You know, you, you're on the court. And in those moments, you're not thinking about, you know, nothing else other than trying to help your, your team and playing. Yeah, right.